The FDA rejects mass booster shots for Pfizer. We'll tell you what you need to know. The latest viral challenge on TikTok is causing a lot of damage to schools. Plus, the unusual step fire crews are taking to save the longest living sequoia tree in the world from a wildfire. Governor Newsom signs controversial new housing legislation into law. Investigators are calling it a drug delivery by drone at a Southern California jail. And showing you some of the world's fastest boats take flight right here at Mission Bay. We'll show you the 57th San Diego Bay Fair. News 8 at 6 starts now. An FDA advisory panel breaks with the White House and says no to mass Pfizer vaccine booster shots for everyone 16 and older. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Marcella Lee. That same panel says yes, though, to authorizing booster shots for people 65 years and older, as well as for those at higher risk of severe COVID-19 complications. This would be six months after full vaccination. There are a lot of moving parts to this story. News 8's Kirsten Holmes just spoke with one of the doctors on this panel about his vote. Kirsten. Hey guys, I that vote actually failed 16 to 2 and I spoke to a doctor, one of the two doctors who voted yes to giving booster shots to the general public. Now we are here in Kearney Mesa where businesses have been struggling to make it through the pandemic. That booster shot, they said, they thought the vaccines were supposed to help everyone get out of the pandemic, but today's announcement led to a lot of confusion. This vote did not pass since the majority voted no. And that was the vaccination advisory panel's vote on whether everyone over the age of 16 should get a COVID-19 booster shot six months after vaccination. Dr. Archana Chatterjee, dean of the Chicago Medical School at Rosalind Franklin University notes. I have major concerns uh, with regard to the extrapolation of data from much older populations to 16 and 17 year olds. We have no data. Mark Sawyer, pediatric infectious disease expert at Rady Children's, voted in favor of allowing booster shots to the general public because he says... In the United States, something around a million people have already gotten a booster dose. And so far, we're not, not hearing about a rise in side effects that would be too concerning. We also saw data from Israel, which has been giving booster doses for three months now. The decision comes as a blow to the White House as the Biden administration previously announced a plan to start administering booster shots to the general public as soon as the week of September 20th. So did the White House get ahead of the science? Yes, I think they, they went a little bit out of line, out of turn. While we wait for more data to support booster shots to the general public, Argentina Servan, assistant professor at UCSD, says getting vaccinated is still the way to go. It's the deaths and hospitalizations that we're seeing are among people that haven't gotten the vaccine. Um, not only are we less likely um, to be hospitalized due to COVID, but if we do um, have symptoms, um, we are more likely to have very mild symptoms. If we just got people who so far have not gotten immunized, if we could get them immunized, that's going to have a much bigger impact than booster doses. Okay, I'm going to walk you through the process because it was kind of confusing. Today's vote came from an FDA advisory panel. Next up, the full FDA will give their recommendation. Next week, the CDC will vote on giving booster shots to the general public. But all health officials say that we should all wait for a full recommendation before all of the general public gets those booster shots. Back to you. Kirsten, the FDA did make a recommendation on who should be getting booster shots, though. So there are still some members of the population that that should be getting them. Absolutely. Those who are immunocompromised or who already have pre-existing conditions, of course, talk to your doctor first, but booster shots have already been approved for people in that population. And 65 and older, an FDA recommendation as well. Thanks so much, Kirsten. The man who shot and killed a woman and injured three other people in a synagogue shooting in Poway pleaded guilty today to all 113 federal charges. John Ernest already pleaded guilty to state charges in the 2019 shooting spree at Chabad of Poway that killed 60-year-old Lori Gilbert Kay. Because of the plea deals, Ernest will not face the death penalty. He will be sentenced later this month in the state case. He faces life in prison without the possibility of parole.
A warning from a local school district tonight about the latest TikTok challenge where students are posting videos of theft and vandalism. It's called the Devious Licks Challenge. As News 8's David Gothardson reports, it only took two weeks for the challenge to spread nationwide. It's a trending challenge on the social media app TikTok called Devious Licks. A lick is slang for stealing something and getting away with it. In this case, students are stealing and vandalizing soap dispensers from school bathrooms, ripping off stall doors, and trashing school property. Devious Licks reportedly started on September 1st when a TikTok user posted this screenshot showing a box of disposable masks the user claimed to have stolen from a school. Quote, a month into school, absolutely devious lick, the caption said. Now about two weeks later, the theft and vandalism has spread all over the country, including schools in the Poway Unified School District. Soap dispensers, hand sanitizers, um, toilet and paper roll dispensers. Poway Unified spokesperson Christine Peck says the district recently put out a notification to parents. Keep an eye on what your kids are posting on social media, bringing home in their backpacks, storing in their room. Devious Licks is just the latest in a long list of stupid challenges on TikTok. So recently, I can think of the milk cart challenge where people were getting hurt and going to the ER. <laughs> You know, it's kind of escalating and trying to one up one another to try to see what they can steal from their schools. And, you know, this doesn't benefit anyone and it's not funny. It really amounts to committing a crime on video and posting evidence of the crime for police to see. And most schools have security cameras to boot. Yes, we do have surveillance cameras all over our school campuses. And so we are reviewing that footage and we will be working with law enforcement. Now, TikTok is aware of the problem. They have started removing those videos and disabling the hashtag devious licks. But of course, students know how to get around those restrictions on social media. Carlo? Oh boy, David. Have any students been charged with a crime at this point for this behavior that we know of? Not that we know of Poway Unify uh, had no information on citations or arrests, but these are juvenile crimes, and if a juvenile is charged, the parents would be notified. All right, David Garfton reporting live on a just a bad TikTok trend. Thanks, David. A former Francis Parker student says she was sexually abused by a teacher and coach while she was an eighth grader at the elite school. In a lawsuit filed today, Grace Wynn alleges the school failed to report teacher Miguel Sembrano to authorities after the abuse allegations during the 2014-2015 school year. Sembrano died in 2016 after leaving the school. Wynn says she only wants to protect current and former students from potential predators. I'm not doing this out of revenge, and I'm not doing this out of hate. I'm doing this to ensure that there is change and systemic reform within Francis Parker so no other child has to go through this. The suit alleges that Sembrano went on to abuse another girl at High Tech High School before his death. In a statement, Francis Parker officials say they take all alleged incidents extremely seriously, but they cannot comment on pending litigation. High Tech High said it does not comment on personnel matters. In Sequoia National Park, the KNP Complex fire has burned more than 9,300 acres. It's now closing in on an iconic sequoia tree, the largest living tree in the world. News 8's Ariana Cohen shows us the unusual and extreme steps that firefighters are taking to protect the tree and other historic landmarks. If you see a sign, a building, or a tree and covered in what looks like foil, this is what firefighters are doing to protect structures and treasured trees. The Sequoia National Park, home to some of the tallest and oldest trees on Earth, is shut down due to two forest fires in the Sierra Nevada mountains. There was a massive lightning event that uh, made over 200 lightning strikes in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. The KNP complex fire started September 9th. It's comprised 
comprised of two fires, the Colony Fire and the Paradise Fire. Fire is burning near the Giant Forest, which has more than 2,000 sequoias, including this tree called the General Sherman. The largest uh, living tree in the world. And the General Sherman, of course, is extremely important, not only to us here in the community, but to many hundreds or thousands of people all over the world. Firefighters are taking measures to protect these tall treasures. Even using structural wrap, which is an aluminum-based material, the same kind of material that a firefighter's fire shelter might be made out of, to wrap the bases of the tree to about as high as a person. They are also using this aluminized structure wrap on signs and historic buildings. It provides a fire resistant aluminum barrier. It works by reflecting radiant heat and deflects burning embers. Fire is not always the enemy for giant sequoias. In fact, low intensity to moderate intensity fire is necessary for sequoias to maintain healthy ecology. However, fires can be catastrophic to these trees. In August 2020, lightning started the Castle Fire, which scorched more than 170,000 acres. It was a totally unprecedented fire in that within that one fire, we lost 10 to 14 percent of the total population of large giant sequoias in the world. Always the first priority is going to be the protection of human life, but the next priority for us in this case truly is our treasured natural resources, the giant sequoias. Um, so that is why we're really going to great lengths to make sure that we protect those natural resources. Officials also tell me another measure they're taking to protect sequoia trees is to remove vegetation from around the base of the tree with rakes and also cleaning litter from around the trees. That way, if fires are to approach, there isn't much to burn. Ariana Cohen, News 8.